Hey everybody, this is Greg Lewis coming at you from the Metastock basement, aka our temporary Metastock studio. I am the marketing director of Metastock and very pleased that you all showed up today for our webinar. As you're logging in, our webinar starts, I should say, in about 4 minutes and 25 seconds. As you're logging in, please do uh, say hello, as has Aihan Sinar. I'm sorry, I can't say that name. And, uh, oh, i got to take care of a little bit of business here. Give me one second. All right, just going to drag that over there so we can see it. All right. All right, so before we get uh, started today, I should say that um, we have a couple things going on. Uh, one is our online trader summit. So let me show that to you real quick. So coming up here on June 20th, we have an uh, eight hour marathon event with many speakers, speakers like David Kino, oh, come on. David Kino, Wendy Kirkland, Vince Vora, Barry Burns, uh, our very own Jeff Gibby, Hima Reddy, Steve Primo, and Oscar Carboni. If you'd like to attend that event, it is on June 20th, a couple Saturdays from now, and there's two ways you can do that. You can either go to traders-summit.com, that is traders-summit.com to register, or you can just come back here because we'll be broadcasting it right here on that date. And of course, we'll record it and you can come in after the fact. The benefit of actually uh, going to traders-summit.com and registering is that you will be able to receive the freebies that a lot of the presenters are offering. So that's something to consider. Another thing I'd like to tell you about is our current uh, campaign, the Metastock 2020 Spring Campaign. This has been extended up through June, uh, the, well, the, the end of June. And what this does is give you an opportunity to upgrade to Metastock or purchase Metastock or get some great add-ons uh, for at a discount or some great subscription add-ons with your first month free. So it's a great deal and it's really something you ought to consider checking out. So I do see we have some people coming in. I see Chico's here and Faisal and Nelly and Thamar. And uh, thank you so much for saying hi guys. And A. Hansen, hello. And uh, let's go check what the time is on everything right now. We got about two minutes. Uh, uh, one thing I was going to mention too about the status of our <laughs> broadcasting from my basement and Jeff's basement is that in about two weeks, I should say the beginning of July, we are in a phased approach going to try and start going back into the office at Metastock. Um, that doesn't really mean a lot to you. The production value will probably be a little bit better on our presentations. And, uh, but it, it's easier for us because we're all in the same room and I don't have to you know, beam in people from different parts of the world. Um, or, or less people at any rate. So it makes it a lot easier for us. And of course, we're all very gracious, I should say grateful to be able to go back to the office and uh, communicate directly and, and all that. So I uh, look forward to that. All right, I've got about one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and check back in with Jeff and make sure he's ready to roll. Uh, just stay tuned, thank you. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and begin. 
So as I mentioned to you, if you've already been listening, uh, my name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing director of Metastock. And today's presentation is finding the right strategy for you. And it's presented by our very own. Oh, I just realized something. I have to switch something over here. Give me a second. Okay, now I think everyone can hear what I'm saying. So uh, today's presentation will be by our own Jeff Gibby. Jeff Gibby has been with the company for about a million years. If I'm honest, I don't know exactly. I think it's 23 years. Of those, I've known Jeff for about 15. He is the marketing director of Metastock. In addition to being a super knowledgeable uh, guy on YouTube, uh, excuse me, on uh, Metastock and trading generally, he's just a super nice guy that lives here with his family in Utah and is a hard worker and a very, very, very pleasant person. So, Jeff, have I missed anything? Oh, and I'm going to read the disclosure. Why don't you switch over to disclosure, Jeff? Or I could switch over to disclosure. One second. Okay, this demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock uh, and accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques today presented should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastocks will have no liability for any investment decisions based on these their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection, connection with the company. Jeff, are you there? Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. All of the sudden, I lost audio. So hopefully that isn't a sign of things to come. I'm just sitting over here going, why isn't Greg starting? What's going on? Something must be um, something must be wrong. So I'm not sure what that was exactly. All of a sudden, I could hear him when he called me. But I want to welcome you. Thanks for coming today. Let's go ahead and get started. I understand Greg did lead, read the legal disclaimer. So I also understand he said a few things about me as well. So let's go ahead and get to going. Um, I do want to say thanks for coming today. Um, I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Um, I didn't have any pleasure of hearing all the good things that Greg had to say about me, but um, I have been here about 24 years or so. And uh, th uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about, or a lot, about the advantages of doing system testing and uh, testing trading ideas and all that kind of stuff. Now, I do want to, Greg, if you could just kind of say that you can hear me. You've got me a little bit paranoid that things aren't going to work now. It does appear that I am being heard. Jeff, so if you, you can, can hear uh, me. Just say yeah, hey. I think everything's going fine. I may have forgotten to mute my mic. Apologies for that. Yeah, you're good. Oh, no worries. Okay. Okay. That would have. Uh, very good. Let's go ahead and get going. So um, just to introduce you myself a little bit. Uh, 24 years here at Metastock. Uh, I've been rated, or I've did 10 years as an inside sales guy almost, and about 10 years as a business development person. And right now I'm in charge of, in, uh, in, of the sales team and a lot of the partnerships that we run here in the US. So let's say this about Metastock to kind of keep things a little bit on the briefer side. I love it. It's a great company to work for. I'm very proud of the, the product we represent. Um, I, I really like the people we work with. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in the office again. I like the fact that most of our customers um, are very, very happy when they contact us with questions. Our support, we keep more people in support than we do in sales and marketing put together. Our marketing guy is pretty good, pretty good. Um, and let's, uh, Not bad. that's about it. Um, it is a company that's been around for a long time. Today, what I want to talk to you about is how to test different trading ideas and how to determine, you know, the what right fit for you and kind of uh, do that in that type of a way. The one thing I will say about Metastock as we get started, one thing that we're incredibly proud of is uh, for the last 27 years in a row, the Metastock program has been rated number one uh, by the readers of stocks and commodities. So we're proud of that. Uh, we appreciate everybody that votes every year for that. Um, and so there you go. Uh, it looks like everybody has good audio. And if you do have questions as we go, I, I do have them open. I can see them right here. Every time I kind of look up way over here, <laughs> I'm looking at the questions to see if they're coming in. So uh, welcome, Chico. Uh, welcome, Amy. Uh, you should be seeing Metastock now. And if you're not, um, or you should be able to see, be seeing a screenshot. 
Today, what I'm going to do, um, the, the class I'm going to do basically is called uh, Finding the Right Strategy for You. And I think the best way, the like, way I like to kind of talk a little bit about this um, in general is I like to kind of go through, and you may be new to trading, uh, it might be something that you're kind of looking at maybe picking up, or you might be really, really experienced. But I like to kind of talk a little bit about what exactly a trading mechanism is, or uh, what a trading system is, and, and kind of how they work and kind of give you an idea of kind of the basics of like ba basically MACD is really what we kind of start with. Um, and then kind of show you how you can use that as an idea that you can test, that you can run with. So let's go ahead and um, get to it. Uh, I only have a few PowerPoint slides. Most of what we're going to be doing is in the software. I prefer to kind of do it that way. Um, it just works out better. Um, if you're not familiar with the guy on the screen, his name's Richard Dennis. The clear giveaway is the fact that I put his name right here. <laughs> but uh, Richard Dennis uh, basically was, uh, it's a pretty cool story. You can look it up on Wikipedia. There's a pretty good article on it. But uh, he was uh, one of the turtle traders. Uh, uh, and the way that that started, if you're not familiar with the story, Richard Dennis um, and uh, Bill Eckhart was the other guy were famous traders back in like the 70s and 80s. And uh, they had a bit of a gentleman's disagreement. They were very wealthy. They were big futures traders at the time. Had a bit of a disagreement because Richard believed that you could uh, teach anybody the rules that he was using and they could have success. And uh, uh, Bill Eckhart at the time didn't. He thought that something that was genetic, that people couldn't manage their risk tolerance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so what ensued from there is, I can see, uh, uh, I am monitoring chat, yes. Uh, what I could see from there, is, uh, or uh, basically the result, is they decided to do a bit of a gentleman's bet to settle this disagreement. They put out ads in the paper, uh, Investors Business Daily, Barron's, a couple of other sources, and they recruited a bunch of traders, and it was not a successful experiment at all. It was extremely successful. And... Um, uh, Here's one of the rules that he says. I always could pub. Uh, I always said you can publish rules in a newspaper, and nobody would follow them. The key to trading is consistency and discipline. So, um, what the reason I kind of like that story is is because I believe a lot of people can be very very successful traders, and what we want to talk about today is not so much discipline as different trading rules. With Metastock, as we get into it, there's going to be about 50 or 60 different trading methodologies that we're actually going to look at, and we're going to kind of try and determine which one's the best. But one of the things that underpins kind of the success in, trade, success in trading and think in general is the key to consistency is discipline, or the key is consistency and discipline. So keep that in mind as you're trading. Uh, the way I like to kind of start today's class is I like to talk. Thank you, Amy. I'm glad you can see now. Um, I like to talk a little bit about MACD, okay? And I, uh, the, the reason I decided to kind of, uh, when, I, when we were putting this, this presentation together, uh, 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 probably a couple of years ago now, uh, the reason I decided to do MACD and to talk about MACD as a system is there's a number of reasons. The biggest one was MACD in the, at the time was one of our most popular videos on YouTube. Um, the other one was I, I knew a lot of people that knew what MACD was. Uh, they kind of understand broad, in broad strokes, what the MACD indicators would actually do, but they didn't understand how this works, how it's calculated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna do to kind of start talking about trading with a uh, trading system is we're gonna just talk a little bit about how MACD works as an indicator, how to interpret it and how to use it. So, and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pop into Metastock, and we're going to do it right in the software. So let's go ahead and do that. I have a chart of the DIA. We had a bit of a meltdown today. People are getting a little bit more nervous about the market. Um, it looks like we might have uh, um, another opportunity to kind of buy in cheap, in my opinion. But let's talk a little bit about how the MACD works. And yeah, this is a fairly, fairly substantial bar today. Um, MACD, uh, or what I've got is I've got a chart of the Dow Industrial Average here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my phone because it's very, very loud. And then I'm going to talk about MACD. So let's, let's go ahead and kind of talk a little bit. I'm going to throw a couple of indicators on this chart. One of the things that I, say, I would say about the design of Metastock is it's designed to be 
very, very straightforward, very, very easy to use. So, and what I mean by that is um, uh, we've tried to design it with Windows in mind and with kind of the Windows uh, um, mechanics in mind. So um, what I mean by that in very specific terms is uh, click and pick and drag and drop. And uh, one of the things I'll kind of tell you, talk to you a little bit about Metastock is anytime you want to change something, just double click on it. So for example, if I want to double click here, I can double click. It's going to go ahead and bring up the, the properties for this, the whatever instrument I'm looking at. And from here, I can say, well, I want to look at candlesticks. Or I want to look at candle volume. I want to look at line. I want to look at point figure. I want to use three line break. But anytime I want to change something like that, let me go ahead and change it to candlesticks because I look kind of like that candlesticks better than bars. Just go ahead and double click it. Okay. They're going to add a, a, some indicators. There's, there's quite a few things over here. They're really kind of beyond the purpose of what we're going to talk about. But if you want to be able to put trend lines on a chart or Fibonacci retracements or values or that kind of stuff, then all of that's going to be found over here. I'm going to skip over ahead, though, to the indicator quick list, and we'll go ahead and kind of put a few indicators on here. So the, uh, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scroll down this list. Uh, there are a couple hundred indicators in Metastock. I don't know what the exact count is, but there's a whole lot of them. And um, they're all alphabetical. So uh, the first one that I actually want to do is I want to do a 12 period moving average. So I'm going to go ahead and choose moving average and then go ahead and drag and drop the moving average where I want it to show up on a chart. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Just I've got my, I'm just going to drag this over here and drop it right here. And as soon as I drop it right there, it's going to ask me what kind of a moving average do I want. And I'm going to go ahead and put a 12 period exponential moving average, okay? What I'm going to do, I, I actually want to make that a little bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click right here. I'm going to go to color style. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker, okay? You can see how kind of easy it is to kind of manipulate things. Again, if you throw something on the chart, you forget to change the color, just double click on it. It's, it's not hard. And that's one of the things that they kind of try and do as we're designing out stuff for the software is just make it as easy as possible. Okay, I'm also going to put another exponential moving average on here. I'm going to go ahead and put an exponential moving average of 26 periods exponential. Okay, um, I am going to change that too. I forgot. I'm going to double click on there. I'm going to go ahead and make that blue so you can see the difference. Also, going to make it a little bit fatter. Okay, we'll go ahead and click on OK right there. Okay, I'm going to grab volume. Uh, uh, volume's not on this chart. I like to have volume on the chart. We're not really going to use it too much today, but I am interested, since we're looking at this together, what the volume hit day looks like with this pretty big down move. So let me go ahead and find volume right here. And again, I'm just going to drag this off and I drop it on the chart. Now, I'm not going to drop it right here. I'm going to drop it down here because I want it to open up a new inner window. So I can either drop it at the very bottom of the chart or the very top of the chart and um, it'll open up a new window. And that happens pretty much automatically, okay? You go ahead and click on OK. Go ahead and move this back down. And because again, I don't want it to be red, I'm gonna double click on it and make the changes I should have made in the first place. So go ahead and click Apply, click on Close. We do have a pretty fairly significant volume today. I do like to see the moving average of the volume. And that's one thing you can do fairly easily with Metastock too. I'm just gonna drag this moving average off um, and it, but instead of putting it up here, you'll notice right now that this is pink. If I point down here, volume is going to be pink. That means when I drop the moving average, the moving average is going to be calculated using the volume and not like the open, high, low, or close. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and, uh, for the parameters, we're going to go ahead and leave that at, uh, it doesn't really matter. I just like to see what the average looks like. I'm going to put that at 25 exponential. Okay. And now I can see, yeah, we're, we're definitely above the, the value of, uh, the, of average today. Let's go ahead and kind of move on, keep you on here. I'm going to go ahead and attach the MACD. One of the things I want to point out is I just did a brand new reinstallation of Metastock. Um, and uh, the one of the things that they've added recently that I really like is that they added the fact, uh, they added this most recently used indicators. So as I throw new indicators up here, as I use indicators, it's actually going to keep track of the ones that I use and put those at the top so I don't have to go find them in the list. I haven't used MACD yet, though, so I'm just going to find it on the list and we're going to go ahead and put it up here. Boom. Okay. 
and we'll go ahead and let that drop on here. Uh, I am going to go ahead and change the color style to black, make it a histogram, and we'll go ahead and click OK. And um, I'm just going to check something real quick. One of the things I also really like about Metastack is when we printed the user manual, we haven't printed it for a number of years, but it was about 600 pages long. And I still have copies of it actually in my closet back here uh, that are very, very handy to have around in case I have questions about how something's calculated. Like, so for example, what I want to do is I want to just very, very quickly make sure that 12 and 26 are the right exponential moving averages that go into the calculation for the MACD. And I can actually right click on here, I can go to help, and it's going to open up a properties page where it's going to tell me there's a 12 period and a 26 period exponential moving average. And actually, uh, uh, um, not to get too far off the path, but it's calculated by subtracting a 0.75 and a 0.15 exponential moving average. So he actually wasn't using whole numbers. He was using 0 0.075 and 0.15. The closest actually time-based moving averages to that are going to be 26 and 12 exponential. Okay. I could also click in here, read you the interpretation of it. I'm going to go through that with you. Instead, I could go in and look at parameters and tips and kind of you know, fully understand this indicator just by looking at the help file. And I really do enjoy having um, that help file available because uh, the hundreds of indicators that are in here, all of them are documented. You can go look them up and see what they do. I'm going to close this down though. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my breath, clear my throat. I got a little bit of a, it's May here, <laughs> it's June here. I'm a little bit uh, allergic to just about everything in June. <laughs> but uh, I'm just clearing everything up. So to calculate MACD, let's kind of move along. What we're going to do is MACD is just the comparison of two different moving averages, a 12 and a 26. If I was to subtract the value of this uh, 12 period exponential moving average to, 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 from this 26 period exponential moving average, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a positive number that's going to be the same as if I looked right here, uh, about seven. Oh, two. Okay. And that's really all it is. The MACD line, what we're looking at is we're just looking at the difference between a shorter period moving average and a longer per period moving average. They're both exponential, but that's the extent of the calculation. So that's very, very easy to understand. Faisal um, uh, says, are you offering some trading software? Yeah. We do stop trading software here, Faisal. That's what we do. In fact, our software has been rated number one 27 years in a row uh, by the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine. And we're going to offer you an extended trial at the end. So uh, welcome uh, to your first Metastock presentation. I'm glad you came. Okay. All right. So MACD is a trending indicator. It's also a, men it's a, it's also, it's a trend indicator and it's a momentum indicator. OK, and the way that that works, there's a couple of different ways you can read it. But in general, if we're in a, a market that's moving sharply down, uh, um, if only we had one that I could show you here. Uh, but like between February and April, this market was moving sharply down. Uh, the sharper that that downward move is going to be, the bigger your MACD value is going to be. So and the more negative it's going to be. So it's measuring trend. It's also measuring momentum because you're comparing that shorter term moving average to what the longer term moving average is. And that's it, okay? If you're in an upward trend, which we had a little bit of a reversal that started here, started to move up, the moving averages got closer together and they eventually went positive. And so then right here, what you're seeing is that positive movement reflected in the MACD because it's reflected in the moving averages. That's it. On here, there is um, what they call a signal line for the MACD, and that's this red dotted line. And to be very, very specific about that, it's just an exponential moving average of this difference. And they do call it a signal line because you can use it as a signal. Okay, But all it is is you're just looking at the moving average of the difference of the two lines. The reason that it's called a signal line is you can use it to take trades on the particular instrument. So if I was trading MACD based on its signal line, uh, what I would say is, okay, well, if the MACD is currently trading above its signal line, then we're in a bullish phase. So right here from about, from right here to just to today, actually, we've been up above our signal line. It might've dropped down for a little bit here as it went sideways, but as long as it's trading up above the signal line, the MACD is in what you call, would call a bullish phase. If it's trading down below its signal line, as it was doing for the majority of the time right here, 
the MACD is then considered in a bearish phase. Okay, and there is a way in Metastock that we can have that visually shown. It's one of my favorite features of Metastock. It's the expert advisor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this uh, this guy in the top hat right here, and I'm going to show you the ex expert advisor that we call MACT by Metastock. Okay, now there are a number of things uh, in here, and uh, they're all alphabetical. Um, there's candlesticks. We could actually go in and display candlesticks. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and go down to MACD. And um, there's one named Meta, uh, Metastock. Uh, then the newer versions of Metastock, it's, it's really called MACD by Metastock. I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the chart. We'll go ahead and click on close. And we can now visually see where that buy and sell signal happens on the chart. Like so, for example, right here, you've got a buy signal that happened um, uh, on May 19th. Okay. Uh, the signal happened because we went from trading below the MACD signal line to above the signal line, okay? That means we entered a bullish phase, and if we were trading the MACD using that method, we would have bought in here on May 19th, okay? Um, right here, just a few days before that, we dipped down below our signal line. You can see that happen right here. That's going to be when we actually went bearish, May 13th, okay? Over here, you can see where we went bullish. Uh, March 26, based on the MACD crossing up above its signal line, and you can see how long that was bear bullish. Okay, and likewise, here's when I went bearish. Before everything kind of started to go haywire, we went down below our signal line, and that's when the MACD generated a sell signal. And you can see that on the chart, and you can see that accompanied with the chart. So, the first way you can trade with the MACD is by using MACD in conjunction with its signal line. Okay, there's two other main interpretations. I'm going to kind of highlight those a little bit as well. And again, if you do have questions, I, know, I realize we're in the basic part of this, and that's great. If you do have questions, please let me know, and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit about it. The second way we can look at MACD is a, is a momentum indicator. So, so that's kind of the trend analysis. Is it up above its signal line? Are we trending up? Or are we trending down? Um, we can also look at it as an overbought oversold indicator, okay? And the way that that works is if you get kind of in a lot of market, let's say the market is panicking like it was right here. Uh, where's my cursor? Right here, right? Market was panicking, things were getting very, very panicked and you're getting a huge negative value in the MACD, okay? Um, over here, we actually had a little bit of an extension that's happening right now. Uh, with the market getting a little bit too exuberant on the bounce. And you can see right here that we're getting a little bit of a red indication on the chart. Right here, we're getting a bit of a green indication on the chart. And that just means, what that is telling you is that the MACD is currently at either an overbought or an oversold level, okay? And there's a function in Metastock that will help me lay this out for you. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show it to you. I'm gonna go ahead and click on view. I'm going to go to expert commentary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push this off to the side right here. I can dock this on the side. Let's see if we do it successfully. Yep. And, uh, and it'll just be here. Uh, and our chart will be over here. When I dock this, you'll notice that MACD is looking at the current bar. Okay. Interesting that the, the high is our 12 and our low is our 26. That's it's kind of interesting, but um, right here, it's going to kind of go through and say, okay, well, the crossover really refers to the signal line. Currently, the MACD is bullish since it's trading above its signal line, so it must still barely, be barely above its signal line. The MACD crossed above its signal line 16 days ago. Since the MACD crossed above its signal line, the price has increased 5%. 4.7, but I'm rounding. Okay, here's what the high was. Here's uh, the lowest since that crossover, or since, since this crossover happened. Okay. Now, yesterday, as I pointed out, I'm going to go ahead and kind of zoom in a little bit. Yesterday, the bar started getting painted red, okay? And I want to show you what that means. And the, the Metastock software will actually tell you, if we were looking at MACD on the Dow yesterday, it would tell you very, very specifically what it, mean, what it means. So I'm going to go ahead and go back one day. You'll see I just moved that arrow over one day. And what it's going to say right here is the crossover, it still gives us the fact that we're above its signal line and we're bullish. But it's also going to say overbought, oversold. The MACD is an overbought range. Now, I like the way this is worded in the software because I, I like how specific it is. Because as you know, uh, the market can stay manic for a really long time. 
Like the market can also stay depressive for a very long time. Okay. Just because something starts trending and starts moving very, very quickly doesn't mean it's going to stop anytime soon. There's, there's eventually probably going to be a reversion to the mean, which we started to see today. In fact, we reverted exactly to the 12th period and 26th period exponential mean moving average, right? Today. But just because it's trending in that certain direction doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to have a correction right away. In fact, if we look at when uh, this all started to kind of shake out here, we were in that overbought, oversold range way before we saw a market bottom. Okay, so I like the way they word this because they're very, very specific about it. The MACD is an over, overbought range. Prices may continue to move higher for some time. That's what it's telling you, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Wait for prices to move lower before you consider any short positions. So if you're looking at this on a chart, if you're in a long signal, you can say, okay, well, now I'm a little bit overbought over. So maybe you want to tighten up a stop loss. Maybe you want to have kind of be thinking about some exit scenarios. Um, but do keep in mind, prices can stay manic or depressive for a really, really long time. Okay. All right, very cool. Uh, and then the third one, I like to talk a little bit about this because um, one of the people I respect very much in the market space with all of the people that I've worked with over the years is a person by the name of Dr. Alexander Elder. And he wrote a book that was called Come Into My Trading Room. And he just had a, an, an enhanced version of it a couple of years ago. Every once in a while, we'll have him into the Metastock chat room. He's one of my favorite guys. He does a, such a good job. Alexander Elder calls MACD divergence the most powerful signal in all of technical analysis. So um, it's something that he quite likes. And the way the Metastock program will look for divergence for you, if it finds divergence, it'll say it right here. There have been, there have been no divergence signals so recently. What is divergence? Well, I'll talk to you just a little bit about it. And um, and uh, certainly it won't be a huge discussion, but uh, we will talk just a little bit about it. If I wanted to kind of look for a MACD divergence on a chart, we could go from a peak to where you had a negative value to where you had a peak again. Um, this probably isn't a great example, but we'll go ahead and draw out the lines here just, just as part of it, okay? If we looked at this peak, we have a debt return below zero. Let's call this a peak as well. Um, you'll notice that there's a bit of an uptrend there, okay? Um, if I go from the peak here to where that peak exhausted, you'll notice that this is pointing down a little bit. Um, that's actually a, a bearish uh, MACD divergence right there. Um, and it's actually a pretty good looking one now that we've kind of drawn it out. Um, that could be a bad sign for the market, but this is one of the things that, uh, that Dr. Elder actually likes to look for. And he calls it the most powerful signal in all of technical analysis. So let me go ahead and delete those signs off of the chart and talk to you a little bit about. Can I delete? Yes. Delete, yes. Okay. We can talk a little bit. Uh, Chico wants to know does the MACD also indicate divergence? Not according to this, but I see pretty big sign of maybe some divergence here, Chico. So, but not according to what the, the calculation is looking at. So that's a good question. Thank you for asking. If it did find divergence, it'll look for the last five days. If it finds that divergence on here, it'll list it right here at the bottom of the commentary. Uh, right now, according to the commentary, according to what we're looking for for divergence, it doesn't match the definition. Okay. All right. Let's sum up. Okay. Why do I like Technical analysis. <laughs> okay. As I kind of mentioned, and maybe Greg also mentioned, but I didn't hear it, but I, would, I did work in inside sales for a number of years. And so far, I've shown you like hundreds of indicators, right? Like I've, I've shown you uh, all, uh, there's a bunch of line studies over here. There's eight or nine different, work, like actual plotting methods of ways you can actually display the data, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's certainly a lot of different things you can do with Metastock. We've been working on it for like 27 years. And so far, I've spent about maybe 25, 30 minutes talking just about one indicator or one method you can use, right? But the reason I like using technical analysis in general is because we can, I can come in here and explain to you exactly what the MACD is. And if I did a 
pretty decent job. You can, you can understand how that MACD is calculated. Uh, I, you can understand why we're putting buy and sell signals on the chart because we're crossing up and below above our signal line. Okay, you can uh, you can understand very easily why we're looking at overbought oversold levels when we get extended. And you can understand kind of the divergence concept, right? The reason I like technical analysis in general is that pure technicians will call technical analysis a shortcut to the fundamentals, to what the market's actually doing. Uh, when I'm looking at technical analysis, everything's fairly objective. In other words, we know that we've bought MACD on the MACD signal right here because we got the signal on the chart. We understand that. We understand what kind of generated that signal. We're not looking at, you know, what a second stimulus check might do to the market. Uh, we're not looking at like what the government action is or the government lack of action is and what its effect of the market is. We're not looking at kind of like what we think is going to happen with quantitative easing. If you go back a couple of years ago to the last crisis we had, right? You're not looking at a, the potential impact of a second wave. What we're looking at is what the market is doing and what the trend of the market is and making decisions based on what the market is actually telling us. And as a result, instead of making subjective judgment guesses, we're trying to decide what we're going to do based on kind of what the chart is telling us. And I love the fact that it's objective because I think one of the most important things about technical analysis is a discipline. As we kind of talked a little bit about uh, with uh, Richard Dennis at the start, we want to be able to stay disciplined about what we're doing. Um, the fact that we're objective in terms of what the way that we're looking at things means um, that we can stay disciplined. We're not second guessing ourselves. We know where our entry is going to be. We know where our exit is going to be. As soon as we get the MACD sell signal here, we can go ahead and get out of this trade. Now, the thing that I also like about the fact that it's objective is it also is a little bit of a shortcut. You know, uh, I could know exactly how well MACD worked on this chart because I could say, okay, if I would have bought right here, let's say I would have bought here on the next day. Uh, at an open price of 245. And I'm still holding that right now, at least for the moment, our closing price is 262. So if we would have bought at 243, and right now we're at 252, sorry, I know that we're at least a little bit profitable, okay? I know that if we would have bought here and sold, or been short here and sold here, we probably would have lost a little bit of money. I know we would have probably made a little bit of money on this trade from down here to here. Probably would have made a lot of money on this sell signal to down here. And so I can instantly kind of go in and eyeball it and see, okay, well, does this indicator work on down? Okay. But since it's programmatic, I can actually say, okay, well, I don't really don't care that much about the MACD. Who cares that it's the most popular indicator on our YouTube channel? Who gives it? Who cares, right? How well does it work? And are there more indicator methods that are more effective for Dow or for Apple or for any of the optional stocks or for the S&P 500 or for any stocks that you want? And that's where system testing is kind of valuable. It allows you to go in and kind of say, what if I would have started trading based on this? What I'd like to do though, is show you how this works. Um, do you guys have any particular, if you have any particular signals, we're gonna do a system test. We're gonna see how well these methodologies work. And uh, if you have symbols you want me to throw into the system test, go ahead and key them up. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the power console and start a system test. So here we go. All right, this is what we call the power console. Um, uh, right here, we've got charts. Uh, which we've been kind of playing with. Oh, we've got a quote window. It's actually pretty cool. Scanner, I'm going to show you real quick. I uh, love the ability to do scanning. Uh, system tester is where we're going. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. There's also a forecaster that we have a patent on the forecaster. Sometimes I do a class on the forecaster. Uh, not today, but the forecaster is very, very cool. It allows us to kind of do a, a whole different type of analysis and a, one of our power tools as well. And then the options go. So we're going to go ahead and set up a system test. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw in some instruments here. What symbols do you guys want to do? Since we started with DIA, let's go ahead and throw DIA in here. Uh, I'm also getting some symbols. Let's do Apple. Uh, we always get Apple. Um, Ali Ami says, I'm interested in parabolic SAR. That's what I'm interested in. Rebecca, uh, parabolic SAR is a system that's in Metastock. So there you go. You came to the right place. Uh, Facebook. 
Oh. Um, is there a TTM squeeze indicator? Uh, we do have, uh, and that's, that's a good question. And I like the initials because they sound like meta stock to me. Um, are you, uh, is that John Carter's squeeze indicator that you're looking for? If that is a yes, the answer is yes, we do have that for meta stock. If um, you're looking for like uh, uh, more of a Bollinger type of a squeeze, we do have the John Bollinger Dan toolkit. Um, that allows you to do kind of some squeeze and some some ana analysis methods that he made up and that he put together. Okay, all right. That looks like the extent of the signals. Um, I'm going to do also a couple. Let's do RCL um, and Costco. I haven't looked at Costco for a while. This might be a good excuse to right. C O S T. Uh, Costado. That's how I thought it was. Okay, we got it. And you notice I didn't. I didn't. Couldn't remember the symbol exactly. You'll notice that we have a lot of COSTs. Yeah. Okay. We do have that MS. We do have the the John Carter squeeze indicator. Okay. So what I could do is I, I just went into our little search dialog box, and you'll notice there's a lot of Costco wholesalers because Costco trades in Mexico, it trades in France, and it trades in. BA, I don't even know what that is offhand. Uh, it trades in Singapore. So um, in the US ones are, are data. And that just usually includes all of the um, NASDAQ trading as well as the over the, the all of the electronic markets. If you want to do NASDAQ only, there actually is a COST.OQ and you can just get that. But don't worry about it. You're not going to use it. If you're interested in it, um, you do have it available. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here. Is I've uh, in my Metastock, there's 160 trading methodologies. Uh, I love the fact with Metastock, you can design your own trading methodologies. So if you want to combine like MACD and Bollinger Bands, you can. Uh, what I've done uh, is I've gone through uh, the list of Metastock system desks that I know come as part of the package and that don't require optimization. Um, we, you can optimize in Metastock. If you know what optimized variables are, you do have the ability to do an optimized system test. I don't like spending 10 or 15 minutes trying to explain what optimization is. So, and it does take a little bit longer to test optimization. So I've gone through and just said, okay, these are 58 systems that are included with Metastock. They're not stuff that I've actually worked on. They're not stuff from add-ons that we might have. These are stuff that you'll have when you install the program. And they don't require optimization so that I'm, when I'm in here testing like six or seven different random stocks, they're going to basically um, test very quickly because uh, optimization can take a little bit longer to test. Okay. Uh, I did put in uh, about six symbols up here. So I'm going to do six times 58 tests. So roughly, I'm going to say that's 300 plus systems. Um, I do want to kind of point out that I could come down in here. And instead of just testing five or six stocks, I could test one stock, for example. I could also go down here and choose all of the optional stocks and test every single optional stock to see how well the methodologies worked. Um, I could go in and test futures markets or Forex markets because we have that data. We have about 200 exchanges. Um, and the reason I kind of like to kind of talk a lot in excruciating detail about the different types of tests that you can run is because we can test one idea or a bunch of ideas against one stock or a bunch of stocks. And a lot of a lot of companies I've seen out there that do system testing have the ability to do like a bunch of ideas, but just one stock. Uh, but not a lot of them have the ability to say, okay, well, here's my ideas. How well did they work over a broad market of stocks? And then that way that gives me a lot more information. Like, so for example, if I was to go in and do a 5,000 instrument test here, I'm gonna know how well it works on uh, how, how well any given methodology works on a broad range of stocks, right? So I can kind of see how well the curve is distributed. I also have the ability to see which are the best, maybe 10 or 12 that actually worked with that particular methodology, narrow it down to find the instruments that work with the right securities. So, and with other system testing that exists in the market, that's, it's not possible. Um, so I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about that. In terms of a back test, what I'm going to tell the software to do is I'm going to we're take all long and short trades. So we're going to do both. I'm going to have it go back 500 records, which is about, oh, hold on. Oh. 
<clears throat> excuse me. I'm only uh, allergic to stuff between, I think, February and November. <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry, it's not coronavirus. It just, just needs a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go have it take all the long trades and all the short trades. So we're going to do both. We're going to go back, back 500 records, which shows about 250 something trading days in any given year. So that's going to be about two years of data. I could actually, there's a, I could actually come in here and say, well, I want you to do exactly two years and just put in a from date and a to date. I could also test different scenarios where I test up to six months ago and see how things worked before, let's say maybe the coronavirus thing and um, and then walk forward those methods from there to see we do have that ability too. Let's just do two years up. So I'm gonna come in here and under accounting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start with hypothetical $10,000. Every time I get a signal on one of these methodologies, I'm gonna trade based on uh, either a, a set number of units, like that would be 75 units right here. I could trade based on a transaction cost. So something like this would take a $750 trade every time it took a trade. Or I could say I wanna trade a, a percent of the available equity. And I'm just gonna leave that at 75, okay? Uh, if you pay commission still, you can come in and put them in here. And then under trade execution, what I'm gonna have it do is instead of having it um, um, buy on the same bar, it gets a signal. Let's say that we went down far enough that we actually triggered a sell signal on this MACD bar here, right? Um, well, let's say we triggered it earlier and then uh, the market rallies up and kind of closes halfway up and the sell, that sell signal goes away. What we're gonna do to avoid situations like that where we might have gotten a signal that it went away, so we're gonna wait till the end of the bar. Since we wait till the end of the bar, we can't trade on a close bar. So what realistic prices means is it'll wait till it gets a signal and it's gonna assume that that signal came in on the bar close and it's gonna buy at the open of the next trading day, okay? So if we got a signal today, it wouldn't take it today, it'd take it tomorrow on the open, okay? If you wanted to, you could say, well, that's not really what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using Metastock real time. I'm gonna be watching the signals to come in during the day. And so I don't wanna delay. I just wanna actually have it buy on the close. I'm gonna check 15 minutes before the close of the bar and buy that bar. Well, then you just uncheck this and say, I want zero delay in the order. And you make that change right there. I'm gonna leave it at realistic market prices. I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start the system test and we'll go ahead and let it run. And then I'm going to check for more questions. YouTube's a little bit quiet today. I usually get some uh, uh, symbols, except for except for Chico. Thank you for your your participation, Chico. All right. So we're we are performing right now 290 different tests. You can see it right here. Okay. It's about 64% done. And it, you'll notice as, as it kind of goes through it, the different names, MACD was definitely one of those, okay? Now, the reason I like to do system testing is like, we just spent 30 minutes plus talking about MACD. What I wanna be able to do is focus on what works and, what a, and really even just learning about what works, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is, these are the five, six stocks that we kind of decided to test. I'm gonna sort them based on the average net gain, okay? So what this is saying right here is this an ACT system, this adaptive momentum system. If we were to trade all five or six of the stocks that I put in at the at the top, on average over the six stocks, we would have made about a, a profit of about three thousand two hundred thirty nine dollars. That's about a forty percent gain per year over the last two years ish. Our best profit would have been ninety seven hundred. Our worst profit would have been a zero gain. Okay, on average. Um, we would have traded about 46 times with this uh, adaptive momentum system, okay? And out of those 46 trades, 22 of them were on average winners to 24 losers. On average, when we lost a dollar, we made $2.55 in average profit, average loss, okay? And this is kind of where it kind of comes down to kind of evaluating this and finding what works best for you. Um, and and what I mean by that is we tested about two years, right? And so that's about 46 trades per year, per two years. It's about 23 trades every year. Um, and that's about, you know, um, one or, sorry, Greg, one or two trades per month. 
I said sorry because I'm clicking my pen and, and that just bugs Greg uh, as a video guy. He just he just it drives him nuts. So I'm gonna throw my pen over there and stop clicking on it. Um, yeah, two, that is bothersome. Month, um, for every instrument you're looking at, it's a little excessive for me. I don't like to trade that often, and so um, what I'd probably be doing is looking at this uh, ACT. Mama Fama system. Mama, um, just I know this, it stands for the mother of all moving averages, and Fama stands for the father of all moving averages. Okay. Using those rules uh, on those same set of stocks, we would have made only 4.40.27% uh, as opposed to an extra 0.22%, 40.49. Uh, we'd have had a better best profit, but we would have only traded about 23 times. Okay versus 46. So we're only looking half as often. Or we're only trading half as often here. Out of the average profit versus average loss, it's about the same $11.14 uh, to $11.80. And for every dollar we lost, um, we made $2.44 in a profitable trade. Okay. There's a no noise system after that, but you get the idea that would have traded us a little bit less, 19. Uh, after that, there's a uh, fractal trading system nine, and we can kind of we do have a lot of we do have a, a very high frequency system, uh, some medium frequency systems, and a, and a fairly low frequency system. So it is possible to find kind of exactly the good fit that you want. I'm gonna kind of drill into this mama fama here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on view here. Okay, and now we can kind of see how those kind of stack up to the different securities that were in there. Okay. I actually put in the wrong symbol for RCL, so that's why um, there's no name and there's no performance. There wasn't, I meant to do RCL and I did RCL. Dot, dot, but that's okay, not a big deal. You go ahead and sort this by profit. Our best performing instrument out of those was Apple. Okay, if we would have traded that, the test period was 6 18 2018 to 6 11 2020, so just shy of two years, we would have actually made a, per, a profit of about 107%. Um, that's uh, a 27 trades and about a $10,736 gain. We would have had 15 winners, 12 losers, and our average profit versus our average loss is $4. Okay. Now, why, why is system testing important? Well, I'm glad I asked myself that hypothetical question. Uh, because if I come back to this major list, and if I was looking at MACD, MACD was profitable. Actually, MACD is a really good system. Um, MS Web says, how can you scan for a bullish MACD indicator? I'll show you just a second, MS. Um, that's a good question. Scanning is something we do incredibly well. So I'll show you. Um, uh, let's go ahead and, but if I was testing, okay, with MACD, what I've kind of noticed over the years is MACD is really good. In fact, one of the things that they told us is show the MACD expert. It, it actually really works on a, a broad variety of indicators and people understand MACD. It's one of the things that they taught me very, very early on when I started working in Metastock. MACD has been a, a, a successful system for a long, long time. I've been here like 20 forever. <laughs> so, but, uh, um, but if I wanted to kind of optimize what I'm doing, uh, for me, MACD would have made about 25% over two years, so 12% annualized. It's nothing to shake a stick at, especially considering where we're at this year, right? Um, but if I was trading a, a fractal trading system or one of these uh, adaptive cycle toolkits, I'd be much better off. And that's the idea. Let's focus on what works. I don't think you should skip like learning about why you're trading stuff. I think that part of the reason you're gonna stay disciplined is you understand the rules of why you're trading something. Um, but what I would want you to do is focus on what actually works over time. And uh, with the testing, we can go back. If you're testing futures, you can go back to 1973 with the refinitive data. If you're testing stocks, you can test back to 1980. It's very, very cool what you can do with this. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit in the woods. I'm gonna go ahead and click on view here. Um, if I kind of wanted to see how well this had performed, let's go ahead and click on Apple and go ahead and click on view and you're gonna have a complete breakdown, okay? It's boring to look at numbers. I'm not gonna go through very many of them. I do want you to know again with the help I can click on this, it's gonna show you kind of like what all these mean, okay? The couple that I'm gonna try to talk about is obviously profit uh, and performance. We made 170% or 107%, 54% annualized. We would have just bought and hold Apple. 
We would have made 57%. That's nothing to sneak to. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty good. Um, but by trading, we were able to kind of get double that in terms of a return in this hypothetical scenario. Okay. Again, 27 trades, uh, 15 were betting the stock, 15 total profitable trades, 10 betting that the stock would go up and it did, and five betting it would go down and it did. Okay. Um, here's our average profit, 900. Our average, our highest profit was 3,000, and our lowest we made eight dollars on a trade. Most consecutive winning trades was four. Most consecutive losing trades was two. Okay. Um, I can go in here and look at an equity graph. I can make sure that this has worked well over time. It's worked well. Uh, uh, this looks like right here. It's going to be the coronavirus time. Here, it's worked pretty consistently over the last two years. I'm going to say. I can plot this on a chart. I'm going to do that. Go ahead and close this down. And now I do have, let me just kind of clean up this chart just a little bit. I do have uh, my favorite expert on here already. <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, just detach um, the expert advisor. It's going to attach, detach, close, so that we can kind of clean up the chart. We can see basically before we start to learn about this system, where the buy and sell signals would come in, how those would work. If we want to kind of go ahead and look at this a little bit deeper, um, I can go into the expert advisor here. I can find that system that was called ACT Mama Fama. I can attach the expert advisor for that. There are also matching indicators. I could apply the template for it. Where is my ACT Mama Fama though? It's going to be up here. Okay. There it is. It was the known, the, wasn't the no noise version. I can go ahead and click on close. That's going to give us the buy and sell signals uh, on the chart. I can then go into the expert advisor. I can see what it's got to say about what the Mama Fama is. With the Mama Fama, they're based on the work of a, a guy by the name of John Ellers, um, uh, who wrote a book called Rocket Science for Day Traders. And actually, I'm trying to remember that. You can see me looking up to try and figure that out. It's actually right here in the thing. Um, but the, he uses um, the mother of all moving average and the father of all moving averages. And right now, those indicators are bullish. If I wanted to go in uh, to the chart a little bit more and see the instructions that it would have given us on the buy day, um, let's zoom in just a little bit so I can find it fast. Um, it'll say it's currently, um, I'm just going to make it bigger. It's currently signaling a long opportunity. Traders who wish to take advantage of this opportunity should enter a long position at the beginning of the next bar. As always, the use of a protective stop should be used to limit risk in the market. Currently, the mama fama indicators are bullish. Okay, so it kind of gives you uh, a place to go to get more information. Talks about how John Ellers de developed these and he kind of published a book on them and kind of how to get that. You can also, uh, as a side note, come in here to the Metastock Health file. And there's a whole section on John Ellers and his work and how the indicators are calculated and uh, just a, a wealth of information. So the idea here is to help a shortcut. Okay, let's focus on the indicators. There's hundreds of indicators in Metastock. There's thousands that are out there. Let's focus on the ones that work for what we're interested in. And so um, by doing that, we can kind of focus our attention and our opportunity on what works. Scanning for indicators, and that's very easy. It doesn't matter if it's, let's say that we did like John Eller's work with the, his mother of all moving averages and father of all moving averages, and we wanted to find something like that, or if we wanted to scan by MACD. If I'm looking at this Apple chart, it would have given me a buy signal that uh, was right down here, and Apple's been trucking up ever since. I would have been very happy to buy back here, but I probably wouldn't consider buying on this buy signal here, right? What I want to do is maybe find a fresh opportunity to buy. And so to do that, I'm just going to go back in here. I promise we'd talk about the Explore, but I'm just going to click on it right here. Okay. And let's say, for example, we wanted to find a Mama Fama buy, or uh, we wanted to find a MACD buy for MS Whip because he wants to find one. Okay. Here I've got a list of my favorite indicators. You go ahead and kind of just uh, do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that Mama Fama buy signal. So right here, I just put a little bit of a check mark here. This will help me find long or short signals for Mama Fama based on John Eller's work. And I could also come down here and uh, they'll have the same name as that MACD by Metastock. 
I just want to just check in real quick to make sure I only have one selected, but I'm just going to kind of select MACD by Metastock. And you, you can run multiple of these scans. Okay, MACD by Metastock. Um, okay. I'm just going to run that one. I'm going to run it against all of the optional stocks. Okay, you can run it against whatever you want. Again, we get all of our data through uh, Refinitiv. Refinitiv used to be Thomson Reuters. They cover 95%, I believe, was the number that they give of the global market cap. So if you want to get data on it from the US, you can. If you want it futures, you can. We have ETFs. We have uh, foreign exchanges. Um, we have 200-ish global exchanges. Whatever you're interested in finding, it's going to be able to find for you. Okay, you notice it's running through the scan pretty quickly. We're doing the Mama Fama first. Um, right now it's rejecting about 100% of the stocks. Um, and what's gonna happen is when this gets done, it's just gonna give us a list down here of the different stocks that have an opportunity for Mama Fama. Once it's done with that, it's gonna start over with the list and do the MACD buy signals. Hey Jeff, so, uh, Jeff can you hear me? You scan Polish MACD. Jeff. Uh, uh, Mr. Hansen says, it's almost weekend, Jeff. What do you expect? Uh, what do I expect from the market? Hmm. Uh, to keep us on our toes for, for the next several months. Um, long term, I think I can say this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan uh, right now of kind of a Buffett style of investing. I don't think it's ever a bad idea to, or I don't think it's ever a good idea to at least long term bet against America. And I think um, I think I'll leave it there. I don't like uh, they don't like me to talk about currently what I'm like buying and stuff like that. I've gotten in, in scenarios where I've had uh, people come in and read the legal disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now, I think we're in for a bit of volatility and a return to volatility. I think a lot of it drives on um, really what the virus is doing. Uh, personally, like. Um, if, if it looks like we're going to have to close down parts of the economy again, it's going to be a harder recovery. I do think a recovery in the U.S. is inevitable. And the other thing that kind of keeps me a little bit on the more longer term bullish side is the fact that they seem willing to print as much money and buy as much bonds as necessary to kind of support this market. They, somebody wants to get reelected this year and uh, they're going to do whatever they can to do it. So. There you go. I think that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, I think we're in for a bit of a ride, though. <laughs> so um, there you go. Let's talk a little bit about Metastock <clears throat> and kind of what that is. Again, it's been rated number one in its price category 27 years in a row. Um, the cost on it is $250. We have two versions. We have a re RT version, which we call the real-time version. It's uh, $250 uh, per month. That includes the Refinitiv uh, data services, all their news, all their information. It's the same stuff as what's provided to brokers and institutions, hedge funds. Uh, Reuters um, is renowned. They're now Refinitiv, renowned for their news and their information and their data. So, um, and these prices are very, very affordable. They're they're meant to be. If you're if you're an institution, we can't really help you. We'll send you to to Refinitiv. They can help you get set up. But if you're in, Individual trader, these are uh, these are basically you're getting access to some of the same news and institutional data that the hedge funds and the institutions actually use, and it's only two hundred fifty dollars a month. We also have an end of day version. We call it Metastock DC. DC just stands for daily charts. It's sixty nine dollars per month. It includes a data link, uh, so it'll, it'll include data for the inf regions that you're interested in. And again, yeah, sixty nine dollars per month. What I'm going to do. Um, today is offer you what we call our extended trial. Our extended trial allows you the ability to look at Metastock for the next three months. Um, so what we do is we have you buy a month. You can do either the real-time version for 250 or the end of day version for 69, and that'll break it down. That'll basically allow you to use Metastock for three full months. The version of the software that's been rated number one uh, for 27 years in a row, uh, the best, highest, most longest rated number one software out there. Um, and the reason we're gonna do that is we want you to try the program. We wanna give you a full access to the program. You know, we've been working on it for 
20, 30 years at this point. And um, we've been adding a lot of tools in three months. By the end of three months, we're gonna provide you some training, some utilities to help you get started. But by three months, uh, that should give you plenty of time to understand just how much Metastock can bring to your trading. So that three month trading, what we're gonna do, uh, you buy one month, you get three for free. Today is September or June 9th. That means uh, you'll be running until 9, 11 of 2020 uh, for just 69 bucks potentially. It's a great way to drive the software. And uh, you can do that in a different, a number of different ways. Uh, you can call 1-800-882-3040. Uh, you can visit online at, at metastock.com slash sales chat. If you have any questions for me or you wanna kind of talk to me or if anything you need from me, just email me, jeffrey.gibby at metastock.com. And there's one other thing that I kind of wanted to mention. Uh, the person uh, that actually hired me into Metastock left the company about, I'm going to say eight, 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. I don't know. But he runs, a, he left to start a website called learnmetastock.com. And um, if you're a Metastock user or if you're looking to get Metastock, I would recommend this. Um, he does uh, basically, it's obviously a, a, a website about learning Metastock. He does three live classes every week. He does hundreds of recorded videos. He'll uh, do a video where he does a, he takes a, a copy of technical analysis of stocks and commodities, uh, writes all the formulas for it, and then kind of talks about it, and then gives you the formulas to download. It's really, really cool. Uh, he'll do formula writing uh, videos, uh, and formula downloads. He does a weekly market outlook. It's a very, very cool service. Um, it works really well. He's been partners with us for a number of years. We're also, if, if you're a new customer for learnmetastock.com, we're going to offer you the ability to buy one month of that at $99, get access to these hundreds of recorded videos, and really break down the cost for about $33 per month. So I would recommend that you do that. It, uh, it's a cheap way to learn about a lot of different topics, including Metastock. Uh, Metastock has always been a tool that I'll talk to people about. The more you know about Metastock, the better and more efficiently it's going to run for you because it's a big toolbox. You know, if you have a big toolbox and you know how to run the screwdriver, you're going to be a lot more effective about kind of getting where you need to go with that screwdriver, right? So you could, I recommend you pair this with your three for one trial if you're new for Metastock. Uh, if you haven't done Learn Metastock before as a customer, try it out, see how you like it and um, see how that works. MS had one more question, and MS, I appreciate all the questions. Uh, can you scan in timeframes like hourly and daily and that kind of stuff? The, the answer to that is yes. I'm gonna show you in a little bit more detail. I'm gonna put a little bit of a disclaimer on that as well. So let me go ahead and bump back into Metastock. Okay, it is done. It actually went through all those Mama Fama systems and didn't find a buy or sell signal at all today. Right here, you've got your Mac, the expert systems. Out of the 4,300 stocks, these are the 1,100 that have buys. Okay, I scanned all these on a daily basis. Okay, if I wanted to do an intraday basis, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, instead of looking at local lists, I'm going to look at online lists. Um, and here's kind of a bit of the disclaimer. It's going to go grab all the data for the scan you want to run in this, and then it's going to start scanning. So like if you do like a Dow constituents list where it only has like 30 stocks on it, you'll be able to run through that scan pretty fast, right? If you're trying to scan like all of the NYSE or NASDAQ stocks and you're throwing some pretty intense math after it, it might take a little bit longer. It just depends on what you're scanning for. But if I wanted to do like the Dow industrials, well, it's just, there's the Dow Utilities. I'm going to do that one because it's actually, no, there's the Dow Industrials. <laughs> okay, so I can do that. Where it says daily right here, I can just change that to a 30-minute chart, okay? And then I can run that scan. Um, the difference here is um, it's going to go grab that data. It's going to take a second to get it, and then I'll pull it back. You can do it. You'll notice it's actually not taking that long. It's already done, uh, but the if if we were to throw 3,000 symbols into this, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually chunk through that data. So that's that's how you do it. I want to be completely realistic with you in terms of kind of like what you can expect. Um, it's going to depend on your internet connection and the scans you're running and how many stocks you're scanning against, but you can't scan intraday data and we do a very good job of it. So any more questions? 
Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put those fun numbers up again. Um, give it a try, guys. Metastock is such a great program. I would trade without it. Absolutely love it. I use it to kind of power my own trading decisions. Um, and uh, give us a call, 800-882-3040, uh, metastock.com slash sales chat. Appreciate your coming in. I hope it was helpful for you. Hope if anything, you learned about the importance of MACD and help us out. But in any case, see you at the next one.